Hello everyone, I'm Isadora. I'm an engineer in the Visual Studio Debugger team at Microsoft. And for this demo, I'm going to show you what breakpoint groups are and how they can be very useful when you're context switching between different bugs in the same project. So for this particular demo, what I have here on the right, you can see it's a very chaotic city, which is all entity. So this is a fork from Transport Tycoon, which is a very cute and sweet game that I wanted to use for this demo. This project, as you can see, has a lot of files. So if I just want to keep track and have a debugging workflow here, I'm quickly going insane. But before we can go all insane, let's just try to understand what this actually does, just so we can have some context, because context is pretty important when you are debugging something. So here you have uh, buzzes, uh, it's picking up people and going back. This is like one of my favorites. They have this pretty train that's going here and picking up Aaron and getting back to the city. And you also have these mayo buzzes that are just delivering mayo and coming back to it. So they are all different, doing different stuff. And one thing that you may have noticed is that through all these different kind of things, there are different things that I wanna, may want to debug. So if you look here, I already have a set of breakpoints that I picked just for this demo. So here I have stuff like order, trains, and check. And you can already have seen here that these are actually a group of breakpoints that point to other ones. So it's much quicker if I'm debugging a particular context. But let's say that I just want to debug uh, order commands. So every time someone has an order, I'm going to stop here and then I can just step through and see what it's doing. Oh, for example, here, it's asking this guy, this fan call here, to go to this particular station, and I can see who this is, and then I can just be super confused about it, or maybe I can just pick this group ID and say that's his name now. And if I hit continue, I'm just going to stay here. And let's say that I don't want to debug orders anymore. And what I actually want to do is I want to debug trains. So I can just click this train and it's automatically enable all these other breakpoints. And then I can just hit continue. And then you can see that I already checked if the train is in depot or not. Well, let's say I don't actually want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. So I can just drag this breakpoint around maybe around here before it even has a chance to return. And then you can see that I even reverse my train and it's a different thing. And it's all part of these breakpoints here. And then I can just quickly keep stepping and going through different things. And I have all the things that I want evolving trains. Uh, and I can even do other stuff. Like let's say that I only want to debug trains when order has been emitted. So what I can do here is actually set that I only want this to be hit when this breakpoint for order has also been chosen. So you can see that they are all disabled and then I actually have to enable my parent breakpoint. And as soon as an order has been updated here, huh, right here, you can see that all these other breakpoints were just activated. So this can also be very useful if you have a function that has been called several hundred thousands of times and just want to enable them in a particular context. And similarly, I have this order. I can do like check orders. So like every time someone's updating the order, I'm doing something. Or just when someone is unloading the cargo, I can go ahead and see whatever they are doing. Again, it's just so useful when you're sharing like projects with like a huge team or like a huge code base and you just want to keep your debugging workflow saved somewhere and actually persisted and actually being able to jump through different context switches around. One of my favorite things is even has support for emojis. So you can put emojis anywhere you want. I highly recommend it if you ever want to try something else in your debugging workflow. And that's pretty much it. So for follow-ups, I highly recommend checking out the Twitter handle for VS Debugger or the blog post for breakpoint groups. You can find much more information about how to create them, how to use them, or just how to improve your debugging experience in general.